sensing for agriculture sir is currently working uh, sir is currently performing his duty as professor and former head department of computer science and it dr baba saheb ambedkar marathwada university aurangabad he is also a visiting professor at southern federation university rotsov russia sir has total 29 years of teaching and administrative experience as a positions of professor professor and head associate professor director lecturer and coordinator during his academic career sir has guided total 15 phd students 13 mphil and 20 mtech students and also currently working with 9 phd students sir has been a part of total 6 ongoing and completed research pro project under remarkable titles which were sponsored by government of india maharashtra government ugc and dst sir has published 259 magazine articles in, in also and in international and national journal, journal and international and national conferences sir has won first prize in inter university state level research festival avishkar 2009 Sir has received Best Teacher Award in 2017 for outstanding out, outstanding excellence and remarkable achievement in the field of teaching. With a huge round of applause, sir, I welcome you for the today's technical session. Uh, over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, Chetan ji, may I know how many registered participants are there? Yes, sir. Registered participant is one thousand one hundred sixty-four, sir. Oh, they are on all on streaming. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, we invite him on YouTube st uh, streaming. So lecture is available on YouTube as and when they are free. Sometimes because some are the faculties and who are also doing some administrative work or teaching or so they will uh, if they will join when they are free they will join. Sir. Okay. Okay. So yes, uh, uh, my, my screen is visible. Yes, yeah, sir. yes, sir. Okay. So I will take only uh, one or two minutes to start. Okay. Yes, no problem, sir. As yes, you can take any time, sir. So oh, okay, okay, right. Okay. So uh, I'll start within a couple of minutes. Yes, sir. Yeah.
ओके सो चेतन जी यस सर हेलो हाँ सो विल स्टार्ट नाउ यस सर नाउ अगेन आई विल शेयर माय स्क्रीन एंड देन विल प्रोसीड ओके सो नाउ इट्स विजिबल माय स्क्रीन इज विजिबल यस सर एंड ओनली लेट मी नो इफ देर इज एनी इश्यू रिगार्डिंग ऑडियो और वीडियो Yes, sir. Whenever issue is there, we will inform you, sir. No problem. Sir. Yeah, yeah. Because I want to run couple of videos during this session. Yes, sir. Sure, sir. So, okay. So, good afternoon, friends. Uh, I welcome you all in this two days webinar on satellite farming being organized by that is the C W S T. along with the international agriculture business management institute and anand agriculture university in collaboration with college of agriculture uh, information technology the aau anand okay so first of all i would like to thank the organizers organizers uh, to uh, have uh, opportunity to interact with the participants in this august gathering so friends <clears throat> here overall i will be discussing the research activity which we are conducting or doing in our department under the prestigious project which is uh, supported um, by department of science and technology that is dst fish program uh, department of science and technology government of india so friends let us start and first of all i would like to share some of the information regarding my university as well as the department uh, infrastructure and uh, all the detail and then i will go for in the detail discussion okay okay so friends Uh, my university dr baba saheb ambedkar in marathwada university has been established in the year 1958 and uh, it's uh, spread all over that is uh, around the 725 acres of green area and uh, we are having more than 400 affiliated colleges and uh, near about 4.5 lakh students studying in university campus as well as the uh, in affiliated colleges and as our university is a graded Uh, uh, accredited, we are part of GAN program along with the some prestigious RUSA uh, funding and uh, uh, again a, a good NIR ranking. That is, uh, we are now at a seventy sixth rank in the NIR ranking, and we are part of many prestigious program. So many departments are. Uh, UGC SAP supported and DST FIST also supposed supported departments. Uh, so now our rank is eighty five. Sorry. Uh, so along with that, this is my department of computer science and IT, which is the English department, uh, founded or started in eighty nine, eight nineteen eighty nine. But even if we are English department, we are leading department in the campus. Uh, along with so as i have specified my department is supported with ugc sap uh, as well as dst fist which are the prestigious programs in academics and uh, we have successfully completed uh, ugc sap first phase and uh, we are now reaching to complete the second place successfully also along with that uh, department is supported with dst fist program of uh, near about 1.25 crores of grant by department of science and technology government of india and under that we have uh, that is created a state of art infrastructure uh, along with building and the uh, in uh, instruments also <clears throat> so out of 1.25 crores uh, 50 lakhs are devoted or allocated for the hardware part in the dst fish program and uh, uh, that is 80 lakhs of rupees are have been allocated for the software part under which uh, we have um, that is 
provided that is LDAS, Enmi, and uh, uh, different sort of softwares. And uh, under this hardware part, we have procured this field spec four, that is field uh, spectro radiometer four, which is costing near about uh, forty-eight to fifty lakhs of rupees. And we have created this sort of uh, state of art art infrastructure for that, along with the dark room uh, to keep or for taking the um, reading readings or spectral signatures from the equipment. And the, uh, there is twenty plus twenty capacity. Two labs are developed uh, under this one. Uh, so, and uh, under this project, addition to, in addition to that field spec four. Um, we have taken that is RGIS, NME, and LDAS software of ten user license along with high high resolution printer, and we are a regular customer of uh, uh, that is NI, NRSC Hyderabad satellite remote sensing data. We are regularly procuring data from NRSC Hyderabad, which is a national order agency uh, to purchase the data, whatever it may be, from the Indian satellite or From this satellite, uh, that is a foreign satellite, you can get a uh, any satellite data in very reasonable price or cost. If we go uh, or we, if we process through this uh, NR uh, NRSC, that is National Remote Sensing Center, Hyderabad, and we are the regular customer or vendor for that. And and for the uh, that is the purchase of the satellite data. in this project there is there was provision of 14 lakh rupees along with this we created a dark room uh, for to take the spectral signatures from the equipment here you can see the setup this is a uh, field spec hd field spec for spectrometer machine along with the this is the illumination lamp which will be falling on the object where we are taking reading and this is the spectral gun Which will be that is collecting or capturing the signatures, and the all the signatures will be stored and processed in for for further steps using a different software uh, to convert this uh, spectral signature into vector data, and again uh, considering that data for further analysis of the uh, things. Okay. Along with that, uh, that our as our uh, university is under. Uh, as a graded university academy that is gan uh, program and uh, i have conducted one gan program in our department in 2016 uh, the russian professor uh, professor ivstikar has conducted one week course under this uh, gan program <coughs> where you can see the glimpses where the then vice chancellor professor chopde along with the professor ethi ivstikar and the other faculty of the department you can see here along with that as i am working as a visiting professor to the southern federal university prostorasia so from where the professor iftikar belongs uh, so i have visited the university uh, as a visiting professor and also i am conducting online classes for the same university in since 2017 so here some of the glimpses where i have met to the rector of the rostro that is a uh, SF University Rostov Tagaran campus again the campus director and uh, the departmental faculty of the uh, department of engineering and graphics computer science in the Tagaran campus along with the professor Ipstika okay so uh, friends as i have stated our department is a leading department in the campus we are the priority department in the campus to opt for or we have those who have started for opted for the cbc choice based credit system since 2007 and the, which is the first department in the university campus <clears throat> and uh, more than 60 students are availing different sort of ugc that is fellowships from ugc dst ict uh, that is rajiv gandhi minority fellowship or uh, different sort of fellowships up till now department has completed near about 3.75 crores of rupees uh, that is project and currently we are mobilizing more than 3.5 crores of rupees under different sort of projects uh, from the uh, central government agency and state government agency 
on the basis of this dst fish project that is we have signed the international mou with the southern federal university rosto russia as well as sanyo university italy and one of the uh, prestigious company international brand uh, indian brand myco seeds limited we are jointly working or uh, under the cmou <coughs> we are working with myco uh, by identifying some of the problems and up till now we are having uh, some joint publications along with these universities and in, uh, with myco we have finished work of that is the uh, identification of, of uh, spongy mango along with that uh, we have worked for the cotton uh, or the prediction of uh, early prediction of the pesticide or uh, disease detection on the cotton plant and uh, currently we are working on the soil organic carbon contamination along with the myco so this was the all the background of my department and i think it was in the need to be essential what we are doing and again i will be sharing the thing in which or what way we are proceeding further and uh, the the students or these participants can uh, it is open to all the participants students or as well as faculty uh, those who are, who are interested to take uh, advantage okay uh, so sir uh, that is Yes, sir. Chetan sir, I am audible and he is okay, no? That is audible. Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah, no issue, sir. The screen is visible and the voice is audible, sir. Ha. If there is any issue, let me know, please. Okay. So uh, these are the some of the main points or key points which on which I will be or will be discussing uh, along with. or what we are doing in the department so friends will continue for that so uh, the main source of energy as we are know, we, we know the main source of energy is solar radiation and uh, the light interacts uh, with uh, any matter or object in different ways Uh, that uh, that that light will be transmitted through some of the material or reflected in different way uh, or that light may be scattering one okay so this uh, both the material and the color that is color of light that is nothing but the wavelength of the light affects this interaction and the this the study of this light phenomenon is referred as spectroscopy so if you observe in this figure that is if there is solar light uh, if it is the object falling on the uh, object so some light will be transmitted with changing some angle some light may be part of light may be absorbed and some part of the light may will be scattered in different direction and some part may be reflected from the surface surface of the object so this is the natural phenomenon or natural property of the light whenever it uh, that is up that is falls on the any object and so the effect of light falling may will be resulting in different ways or every object on the basis of the content of that particular object or uh, how the surface is uh, that is characterized or uh, how what type of surface is that on the basis of that this reflection transmission absorption and scattering of light will be dependent okay so for every object the phenomenon will be a different one or unique one and on the with that basis this uh, uh, this is the this uh, principle of spectroscopy works okay so this ahd field spec 4 is line of full range of spectro radiometer which deal and that is delivers the fastest and most accurate spectral Field measurements or spectral signatures, and this is the study of interaction between the physiochemical characteristics and spectral signatures characteristics of the object, as I have stated. And this spectroradiometer have been used in the detection 
along with identification, verification, and quantification of the quantification of the object. So what we can do that is we can detect the particular object along with we can identify a particular object. We can target a verification of a particular object, or we can quantify the content of the object. That is, along with all these things, we can do or can be performed uh, by using this uh, unique equipment. That is, detection, identification, verification, and quantification of the object is possible, as this is a dedicated instrument. And we have procured the spectroradiometer from USA, and which is costing near about 50 lakhs. And which is which AMC, the annual maintenance contract of this equipment is uh, 2 lakhs and 50,000 per year. So we have to, uh, this is very much dedicated equipment. And these are the uh, technical or specifications of uh, this uh, equipment. Where you can see that is the spectra range of this equipment is a two five zero uh, to that is uh, three five zero to two five zero zero nanometer, along with spectra resolution three uh, three nanometer to seven hundred nanometer, and uh, these are the other uh, related deep, that is the specifications of the uh, this object uh, that is this equipment along with it is having a detectors that is VNIR which is uh, working or offering in between 350 to 1000 nanometer that is SWIR1 that is short wave infrared light detector falling in between 1001 to 1800 nanometers along with SWIR2 detector falling in between 1800 to 25 100 nanometer along with the other details. <clears throat> so here, this equipment is having a huge variety of area, uh, that is areas of application. Or in any area, we can, uh, in different areas, we can take the advantage for application, uh, or you, we can use as an application, uh, to take the advantage in various areas. We'll here I'll focus on some of the important or main areas. So this equipment can be used for study or for analyzing a geological concept along with the mining in mining field also, along with uh, to identify and analyze industrial minerals, petroleum contents can be identified along with the remote sensing and geological. Uh, uh, geological thing. So here we'll see one video which will be focusing on how it can be used for a mining field or mining area. Okay. So here. At ASD, we have a tradition of expanding the limits of our technology into new application areas. We really have one mission, and that's to make it easier for our customers to use our technology in whatever area of, of business they happen to be in. We've been doing this for, for over 20 years now. Uh, we've been working in industries related to mining uh, for, for most of those 20 years. ASD was founded by geologists and earth scientists focused on applying remote sensing to geology. Today, ASD customers span 70 countries across industries as diverse as remote sensing, pulp and paper, pharmaceuticals, and mining. To put it simply, we apply near infrared technology to identify and quantify the composition of many materials, from wood pulp to the mineral content at prospective mine sites or crushed ore in production. For the past 10 years, ASD's robust, high-performance portable instruments have been used in the field by geologists conducting early mining and mineral exploration. ASD's instruments are particularly well-suited for the rapid analysis necessary to make decisions during metallurgical processes. Our non-contact, non-destructive spectroscopy instruments can simultaneously measure a wide range of ore properties. 
For example, it can optimize heat bleach operations by measuring the abundance of swelling clays, acid consumption, mine deposits no longer exist. Mines want to maximize the amount of extracted metals in the least amount of time at the lowest possible cost. ASD can provide better, faster analysis of even the most complex deposits to reduce cost and increase throughput by providing better process visibility. The TerraSpec Explorer is a rugged, portable spectrometer designed for mining exploration field work. Applications include geologic mapping, mineral identification, and chip and core analysis. Many minerals transmit characteristic wavelength signals that the instrument can interpret as optical spectrum. Using the TerraSpec Explorer, geologists can identify key alteration minerals in real time and rapidly map alteration to zones associated with porphyry copper deposits. When paired with GPS readings, deposit mapping is even more efficient. The TerraSpec Examiner was designed for lab and production applications such as site mapping, block modeling, ore sorting, and mineral analysis. It leverages traditional sample analysis techniques such as X-ray diffraction, phlegm scan, and wet chemical analysis to quickly analyze a much larger number of samples on site. ASD's Summit Cal Solutions team is working with mining operations to develop calibration models that leverage lab analysis to produce immediate information about ore samples. Analysis that used to take days now take minutes or less. One copper mine now measures nearly 1,000 samples a day with less than 24-hour turnaround, something never before possible. Analyzing more samples faster means better visibility into mineral processing needs so the mine can quickly adjust its processes to increase yield and manage costs. What does the future hold for mining as spectroscopy becomes an integral part of nearly every phase of production? The next logical step is bringing the instrument to the conveyor belt to allow real-time measurement of multiple constituents simultaneously for faster, tighter process management. The Quality Spec 7000 is a stationary, high-speed NIR mineral analysis unit situated over the conveyor belt. In copper production, the Quality Spec 7000 is used in agglomeration to optimize acid usage and water addition, resulting in reduced acid costs and increased yield. The Quality Spec 7000 accurately measures non-uniform material containing minerals, clays, and physical properties. This over-the-belt analysis technique is destined to become the new quality and process control standard of the future for globally competitive mining industry. The accurate real-time information produced by near-thread analysis and the resulting visibility, process efficiencies, and cost savings make it the ideal choice for mining applications. ASD offers spectroscopic technology, solutions expertise, and the customer service to support it all, from exploration to production. Yeah. So, so was what it was audible and visible, no? Yes, sir. Audible. Ah, okay, 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 that's fine. So, we'll proceed further. So, friends. We were there. That is in uh, in this way, uh, the equipment is very effectively used for the mining purpose, along with the industrial minerals, petroleum minerals, along with the, uh, and for the remote sensing and geology, to uh, have been used for decades for remote geo that is geological uh, interpretation, along with the analysis uh, or provide mineral mineralogical data to the petroleum exploration market uh, along with the industry and minerals. This is one major area. Along with that, it can be used in the defense and uh, uh, intel sort of things. Okay, so in defense also, it can be used to detect the disturbed surface. surface. That is, if any explosion is being, uh, that is, uh, built in the, that is, in the ground, it can detect the that is the explosion, that is detection of disturbed surface, means a hyperspectral sensing ability to detect ground disturbance aids in the detection of buried land and mines, means that is with this equipment, this equipment is capable of identifying the content uh, up to five to six 
uh, feeds below ground what will be the th things or what are the content there or what is the soil type there so uh, along with that it can be used to uh, to study the near shore operations uh, that is planning of amphibians operations uh, uh, it requires knowledge of bearing the strength and and that is trafficability of the leading areas as well as the bath bathmetry in the vicinity of the that is some some sort of near shore operations are also possible for this equipment is used along with there is the another third major area uh, to have study and analysis of environmental parameters where we can use this equipment for landscape ecology and ecological research along with climate research of on the climate effects along with the atmospheric remote sensing research and ice characteristics research and snow research so it can also generate the spectra of ice as well as research okay so next that is a material analysis is one of the again major parameter or the area where this equipment or advantage or application of this can be taken where we can uh, analyze the quality of food along with the uh, that is in uh, to detect uh, the quality of pharmaceuticals as we know that on every tablet or on the any particular drug the ingredients or contents of that particular drug has been mentioned on the uh, uh, labeling so we can check all the contents of that particular tablet or drug whether they are in that percent that is potassium this much percent nitrogen this much percent or phosphorus this much percent this sort of content ingredient ingredients of the uh, tablets or pharmaceutical is mentioned so we can check the quality of the particular pharmaceuticals or any particular good along with the that is Uh, that is nutraceuticals and uh, that is dietary supplement uh, sort of application so means we can use this equipment to check the quality of the seed food or pharmaceuticals this is one other major area and again uh, the uh, this next fifth area is agriculture area so here in agriculture related areas we can do the soil analysis what is the soil analysis soil analysis means we can find out the contents of soil all the 100% content that is soil moisture potassium content nitrogen content phosphorus content or all the ingredients we can map in percent or in the uh, that is quantity of the particular soil organic that is the uh, uh, contents can be mapped and, and on the basis of that the particular pesticides can be recommended to the farmers or a particular type of crop can be recommended to the farmers that is the particular soil will be suitable for which crops that can be recommended and again the soil analysis on different parameters can be studied analyzed and uh, utilized along with we can find out or work on the plant physiology physiology uh, of this one Uh, again we can as i have stated that we can check the grain and seed quality or we can make analysis of grains and seeds also along with the bio mass analysis and some of the commercial applications so here friends uh, as our country india is uh, having more than 60 to 70% population which, which is dependent on the agriculture or the farmers so we are we have target uh, decided to target or to focus on agriculture issues that is analysis of soil or analysis of vegetation so as to that our contribution will be will be, will be useful to the farmers uh, so at our lab we are targeting major of the uh, major contribution of the all the research student that is phd mtech mk and all these one we are focusing on either on Uh, that is uh, that is all the agriculture aspects uh, that is for making use of this multi spectral or hyper spectral data generated with the help of this equipment which is a non imaging data uh, for analysis of 
agriculture purposes or for the and the uh, work on the agriculture uh, related areas okay so here we are working uh, our work is majority focus on soil analysis that is vegetation analysis okay so uh, here we'll see again uh, what is the concept of hyperspectral hyper imaging or multispectral imaging hyperspectral and multispectral that is multispectral means more than one spectra that is 5 10 or any number 100 spectra that that can be referred as a multispectral but hy hyperspectral means that is thousands or number of million thousands that sort of data is referred as a hyperspectral imaging so here we'll check one video again to know the basic sort of thing that is what is meant by hyperspectral image videos for your business one moment hundreds of templates designed to get them perform A good way to work with materials, identify them, or define their properties is to study how light interacts with them. Light interaction with materials is called means how light behaves in the target and recognizes materials based on their different spectral signatures. These spectral signatures can be identified from the spectrum of the material. Spectrum describes the amount of light in different wavelengths. It shows how much light is emitted, reflected, or transmitted from the target. To put it in short, the spectrum tells how much of a certain color this light contains. The usual way to present spectrum is a graph on a scale of intensity and wavelength. Spectral signatures can be compared to fingerprints. Just like fingerprints can be used to identify a person, spectral signatures can be used to identify material. Let's examine the reflected light in more detail. To study the light, one needs an instrument called a spectrometer. It's an instrument that splits the incoming light into a spectrum. In this example, the light going through a spectrometer is reflected. and the result is therefore called a reflectance spectrum measuring the reflectance spectra is the most common way to use hyperspectral imaging hyperspectral imaging uses an imaging spectrometer to collect spectral information this device is also called a hyperspectral camera with hyperspectral camera we are measuring thousands or hundreds of thousands of spectra instead of single spectrum The collected spectra are used to form an image of the target in a way that each image pixel includes a complete spectrum. By doing this, we are able to get answers to questions what based on the spectrum and where based on the location. We can pick any position from the target to get the information. This means a big amount of accurate information. The data that hyperspectral imaging provides is called a data cube. because the hyperspectral data is actually three dimensional we will use a book example in the next tutorial called what hyperspectral imaging provides to explain it yeah okay so now Thank <laughs> you. 
Now we can show Again, I will stop the sharing and I will again share the presentation because I could not get my PPT here. Okay. Yes, sir. So, okay. Now, my screen is visible, no? Yes, sir. Ah, one moment. So we are here. So we have seen the concept of uh, that is multispectral or hyperspectral image. Okay. So here this is the example of spectral signature. So here you can see the spectral signature of a, a vegetable or vegetation. Uh, indicating a green spectra. It is, it is showing a spectral, the pattern of the spectral signature of a veggie, that is vegetation or green, green things or live thing, green thing. Whereas here in brown color, you can uh, see the pattern of the spectral signature or spectra generated for dry grass. Okay. And for soil, you can see the spectra generated in the uh, that is yellow, yellow color. So these are the standard spectral signature or st standard spectra or signature for a particular that is vegetation, dry vegetation and soil. So there will be a little bit difference in different sort of soil or different sort of this, uh, that is vegetation or dry grass. Uh, depending upon its that is blue, green and red infrared light. Uh, so these are the near infrared light area, mid infrared and hereafter you can see the that is the uh, infrared area too. Okay. And the spectral signatures are being generated uh, for the wavelength in the wavelength against the reflectors in nanometers. Okay. So these are the standard spectra or standard spectral signature for a particular objects. Okay. So the on the basis of this the characteristics of any vegetation or soil or the any object can be captured. So here you can see that this is the standard spectral signature or spectral signature generated for the vegetation or green things. Okay. So this is a general pattern where you can see uh, that is this is the visible uh, near uh, that is visible range along with the near infrared range and short wave infrared range and here you can see uh, here up to 0.6 or this is the absorption area of for the chlorophyll is being indicated in the uh, that is small peaks or the chlorophyll contents can be mapped in the range of this spectral bands where the reflection due to spongy mesophyll is this. And in this range, you can say the water absorption area or water contamination is being wherever there is a uh, deep peak that is referred as a water absorption area where here for the, these are the spectral bands which are showing the chlorophyll contents or chlorophyll absorption area. Okay. So why this happens, this reflectance, why this is the reflectance? Because you can see this here, how the plant leaf reflects lights. Because this uh, satellite light 
or the solar light will be falling on the object or on the leaf of the plant in this way and that light will be reflected in different ways on the surface of the leaf so some light will be reflected some light may be scattered or <clears throat> in different ways and that that things are being captured by the satellite and on the basis of that the particular uh, identification of a particular tree or the health of a particular crop can be measured or whether the plant is diseased or healthy can be uh, classified again the level of severity of the disease also can be mapped uh, by analyzing the characteristics of the reflectance of light from the surface of leaf so this is the concept here if you check the um, uh, cross section area of the leaf uh, this is the structure of leaf where you can see the different uh, 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 that is insides of the leaf where uh, this is, this is referred as mesophyll area or epidermic cuticle along with the and that is pollenicemia or palisade parenchyma or the, the these are the different part or vein so the surface of each content is sounding in different way and this blue green red infrared lights are being falling on the object and they will be reflecting as on the basis of the characteristics or absorb some part of the light will be absorbed or some part of the light will be reflected or transmitted or transformed and reflected or, and that that characteristics generates a unique spectral signature or unique spectra from the surface of reflected light on the surface of the leaf or any surface any object okay so some part is absorbed some part is again reflected and uh, some part will be affecting uh, making effect in different ways on the uh, cross section or on the surface of the leaf this is a leaf cross section area so that's why the every object or every particular different tree leaf will be reflect in different ways or every tree will be that is having a unique pattern of their its spectral signature of leaf depending on the content of the leaf or surface of the leaf okay so on that basis the unique spectra of any particular object or leaf or soil is generated and that will be a unique one and on this basis of that the uh, analysis is done whether leaf is a healthy leaf or infected leaf or disease leaf or uh, the the type of leaf or uh, which tree leaf is it that is we can make a classification of trees also on the basis of this layer, that is reflectance of the signature of spectra okay <clears throat> so here uh, the same things are being discussed that is uh, we are having a visible uh, region along with the nir region and swi region these three regions are being there and essentially in visible range you can map or you can find the chlorophyll absorption area or these contents can be found in the visible region as like a chlorophyll or carotenoid polyphenol or this additional one so chl absorbs in the band that is 410 to 430 these are the standard band and 600 to 690 this is the spectral band range where the Uh, chlorophyll can be targeted or find out or these are the absorption area for the chlorophyll and chl b absorption bands are 450 to 470 along with in between 490 that is 440 nanometer to 480 nanometer carotenoid absorption area can be found so these are the standard band where band width or band length or bands where the particular chemical can be mapped or can find out which we are we finds early in earlier ways by making some of the chemical reaction on the plant leaves and which 
takes more time which generate different sort of, uh, sort of gases and uh, some chemical reactions and all these things but here without doing all these things we can get a targeted chlorophyll band or carotenoid or chl band along with in nir region you can find the other pigment of the leaf as like a cellulose or translucence in, in nature there um, that is therefore the absorb very less amount of light energy and the reflectance reaches to higher value in the near infrared region because here cell water interface are responsible for it and in swi region there is maximum absorption area related to water sources or water occurs in the band range of 1450 and 1940 which we have seen in earlier figure also so these are the water absorption bands okay. in uh, short wave region okay okay so again here you can see the standard absorption bands or features of vegetation where we can target which chemical okay so on the band wavelength band 430 you can check out for the chlorophyll a 460 chlorophyll b 640 chlorophyll b or 690 protein content can be mapped or 1020 protein content at 1510 protein and nitrogen content so these are the standard spectrum bands where we can target or we can map or find out the spectral bands or range uh, where we can find out these different uh, chemical characters or objects out of the vegetation or leaf or green greenery okay so accordingly you can protect that is water or protein nitrogen or cellulose along with this one uh, respect the different spectral bands and these are the cause of the absorption okay so on the basis of this what we can predict from the vegetation reflect that is the question okay so here with uh, utilizing all these characteristics we can find out grain yield or that is the outcome of the yield of a particular crop again plant growth can be mapped along with the stress detection so we can check that whether the plant is a stress plant stress plant means it is uh, requiring a water due to water it is stress or we can find chemical content like nitrogen phosphorus potassium and so on so on the this basis plant health can be decided or analyzed again we can have a detection of disease and its effects on the plant and level of disease severity of the disease can be mapped along with the discrimination between different species of the plant that is we can differentiate or classify different species of plant or we can identify a particular plant on this basis of this characteristic or the identification of vegetation species also it is possible uh, by utilizing all these characteristics of the uh, spectral signature okay so nisha uh, am i audible clear hello yes, nisha ha huh, it is clear no i i am audible no yes yes sir ah so, so okay okay i'll continue so after this for um, this uh, the different vegetation indices are being used so after getting the spectral signature that spectral signature is being converted in the vector data and data that data is taken as a input for further process so here i am showing some of the vegetation in uh, vegetation related indices that can be used to map or analyze or quantify the particular so uh, these are the vegetation indices uh, which can be used so ndvi 
that reflectance range r r e n r that is e n i r and minus r rate divided by r e n i r plus r rate so in this way this uh, n d v i reflected indices can be mapped or can be calculated along with there are different vegetation indices are being used as per the suitability and requirement of uh, the mapping uh, or doing the analysis of the vegetation particular so ndvi sr or si or psri or these are the different indices which we can be used uh, to have or to calculate lai or green biomass Along with the actions and all this. Okay, so these are the reflectances that is the indices related to vegetation mapping. Okay, or identifying, classifying, or quantifying the vegetation object. Okay, green object. <clears throat> so again, how this detect detection of plant disease or earlier detection of plant on the plant can be decided or can be mapped or can be detected by using this hyperspectral image i'll i'll say share one video for that So what we're really trying to do is to try to detect disease at a whole plant level before we visually can see them. Before I could have someone go out in the field, before people could actually scout to see them, we could use this technology to tell us that earlier. So one of the technologies that we use is called hyperspectral cameras or hyperspectral technology. If we think about a normal, you know, everyday camera that people have on their cell phones, those are RGB cameras. Basically, those cameras are capturing information for just red, green, and blue wavelengths. So instead of just three values now, we're able to capture a lot of different light wavelengths, and it even can extend from what our eye can actually see. And so what we do is we capture these wavelengths several hundred of them at a time when we're taking our images and then we get profiles of the plants and what we're doing is we're trying to match up profiles with a plant that is not being stressed and a plant that is being stressed can we tell basically just by taking an image can we tell if that plant is being stressed or not and so what can happen then is you can take that information and build a different sensor a much cheaper sensor that could then be readily used in a farmer's field. They could mount them under their tractors, they could use them in an aerial setting in a drone to assess their fields for that disease. And also the pilot of this is, you know, we're using it for these two diseases, but we really think that this could be a broad base use for identifying all kinds of plant stresses, different pathogens and also different environmental stresses. As farmers would go through the fields, they could pass out all these different things and you could tell you have this disease, you have this disease, you have this deficiency in soil minerals or nutrients you need to put fertilizer on things like that is really what we're trying to get at with these things and this is just the pilot of that but that's really where we see those five ten fifteen years down the road is where this where this is really going okay so so this is the way how this uh, hyperspectral data can be used for early detection of the disease on the plant okay again i would like I will have to stop sharing and share this one. So my screen is visible. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so here we have seen how uh, this uh, hyperspectral data or imaging can be used to detect early or uh, early uh, used to for the earlier detection of disease on the plant or uh, on field. Okay, so here you can check or you can see the spectral signature of the soil. So this is the standard that is standard pattern of the soil. Uh, again, the soil may be having a lower organic material along with the higher material and uh, high, that is high, uh, 
higher OM as well as lower OM. That is organic material. Depending on that, these are the spectra of spectral signature of pattern of the spectral signature soils. Okay. So here OM sounds to be organic matter and OH sounds for the that is uh, that is hydro hydroxyl. That is high hydroxyl. Okay. So uh, on the basis of that, some of the factors affecting soil reflectance are those that is uh, it may affect the reflectance of uh, spectral signature. Uh, depending, it is depending on the soil moisture. Some soil may be having more water content or moisture. The pattern of signature will be different. Lower moisture, different pattern. Again, we can define or we can have that can depend on the soil textures. What is soil texture? That is proportion of the uh, soil that is shine, sleet, or clay salt of uh, that is type of slide. Uh, the spectral signature will be differing. Uh, if there is more sand or slit sort of the clay sort of soil, okay, and it depends upon the surface uh, surface roughness of the soil. Again, presence of iron oxide in within the soil, organic matter content in the soil, along with the presence of moisture in soil, will decrease its reflectance definitely because it is having more absorption, water absorption area, and this effect is um, that is greatest in the water absorption band at about. That is 1.4, 1.9. That is these are the nanometer range of the uh, water absorption area. Okay. So again, what we can predict again the, the from the soil reflector. So here we can target or we can estimate water content in the soil along with the estimation of contents of soil. That is what content? That is copper, nitrogen, carbon, calcium, potassium, magnesium, sodium, phosphorus, zinc, and so on. Whatever contents. 100% each and every content of the soil can be mapped and can be targeted and mapped. And again, finding the soil, that is soil, finding the moisture content of the soil. Okay. So here, these are the some of the vegetation uh, indices which are used to analyze or make a, uh, that is uh, uh, map or uh, make, uh, make uh, finding out the contents of the soil, that is SAVI, MSAVI, MSAVI 2 or OSAVI, these are some of the standard vegetation, that is reflectances or indices that are used to map the soil content. Okay. So here you can see the spectral signatures of the fruits also. So where, which is the spectral range uh, to show the contents of, if which content of fruit, fruit is shown or indicated at what range. So this is a standard spectra or spectral signature of the fruits. And where you can see that uh, this mag that is manganese or potassium, lead, zinc, these are being targeted or object within this 400 to 600 range. Whereas chlorophyll, phosphorus and nitrogen can be uh, that is targeted the, in the range of six, 100 to 650 and so on, you can see, okay. So on the basis of this, we can make an analysis of food or fruit, whether the fruit is fresh fruit or it is a store fruit. And again, the store fruit will be having a less useful contamination, okay. Or energy contents, okay. Again, we can have a spectral signature of a palm also on the basis of that, the equipments correctly target whether the particular uh, person, the spectral signature, if we put a palm in front of that and that signature is available with the particular equipment, then it will correctly identify a person that the person is matching with XYZ or name of the person. So on the base, this base also, one of my PhD students has completed her work, awarded PhD. So uh, we can skip this one due to time constraint. I will skip uh, now. I will be skipping some of the slides and cover which are the essential ones. So these are the some of the factors which affects again the spectral signature. That is the properties of target. 
that is chemical and biological properties and that is texture and physical properties may affect the spectral measurement and spectral signature again illumination of geometry that is illumination of light light falling on the object uh, will be affecting the uh, the signature will be depending on that that is sun attitude and position date time scope that is atmospheric uh, things also may affect or will be affecting on the spectral signature along with the sunlight that is in the morning way the sunlight will be falling in one direction that is and the intensity of light will be a different one in the afternoon sunlight the angle of sunlight will be different and intensity will be different and all these things will be affecting the spectral signature and due to this reason that is after every uh, half an hour we have to optimize the that is equipment or initialize the equipment and we have to take readings that precaution is to be taken uh, when ever we are uh, that is taking spectra on the on field so here i will like to want to state that this equipment is a portable equipment it, it, it can it can be mounted on the uh, that is back and on field spectra can be taken or uh, reading can be taken also in control situation in lab but we have we have created the dark room that's why we have created the dark room so as to know that is surrounding light affect the reading so in control situation we will be getting a very correct results than this on field but definitely this can be used on field also also integration measurement of the timing calibration of the instrument is to be done correctly again the other environmental factors like humidity temperature wind speed direction cloud cover and type these different things are will be affecting and the major thing is the vv geometry that is field of view is to be selected where you are taking the spectral signature spectra of the uh, object or data you are taking so in control situation there are three not total three field of views that is 1 degree 8 degree and 24 degree so uh, essentially 1 degree and 8 degree uh, field of view is used to take a readings or spectra in control situation means, means in the lab whereas uh, that uh, 24 degree uh, angle of uh, field of view is to be used while taking the readings on field okay next so that's why it is requested or it is required to have proper data collection for identification quantification or quality analysis of the object acquisition of correct spectral signature is essential proper measurement must taken must be taken while collecting the spectral data because many factors affect the spectral signatures so these are the standard steps when uh, we may start to make a use equipment before that we have to uh, follow these steps that is before half an hour we have to warm up the equipment for at least 15 minutes to half an hour warm up the start the equipment then laboratory setup of the spectrometer means uh, we have to calculate field of view and select field of view as per the requirement then we have to optimize the equipment then we have to calculate the darren and we have to take a white tips of the um, that is panel and then we have to start if after getting the straight white reference means the uh, re equipment is ready for taking the spectral signatures okay so here are the some of the steps so i will not go in detail for calculating the field of view the three standard field of view can be used along with this if for more accuracy and more detail and the particular uh, that is person can calculate the field of view and accordingly he can select the field of view but i will skip this part due to time constraints so essentially uh, this one is uh, for slant position we can select this uh, 8 degree uh, sort of thing 
that is geometry of field of view and, and uh, to calculate the field of view then the this position is referred as another nadir position means uh, that is this is the spectral gun in 90 degree you can take the readings on field so for this uh, uh, initializing the equipment rs3 software is being used or it is inbuilt in with the system then you can optimize the equipment is the third step optimizations then you have to take the dark current measurement and then for wide referencing uh, reference that you should get the straight line the meaning is your equipment is ready to take the spectra or spectra signature without getting the straight the straight line we can start go for the uh, reading okay so this is the basic requirement to have a white reference as a straight line okay on this screen okay and after this you can start the taking the reading so here you can see the lab setup again which i have this is the equipment then this is the illumination light falling on the object is spectral gun and the through this wire and uh, this equipment is connected to the system here you can store the spectral signatures for further analysis further process of the data okay so this is a complete complete setup of the equipment okay so in our department as i have earlier stated uh, as with our in, uh, india is a agriculture based country our majority of population is depending on the agriculture product or thing related uh, we have decided to focus more on agriculture field that is analysis of vegetation crop analysis as well as soil analysis so as to that we think that we should be uh, the in position to support the essential class of farmers in our country so uh, at our lab the mtech mphil and phd scholars from computer science and computer engineering are working and so many students have completed their phd and uh, mphil and mtech degrees and they have worked on the many different aspects so for agriculture anybody can have or they have taken so, so this is the list of progress work progress in our mhs that is winter crop discrimination using field hyperspectral uh, data or classification of crop types using spatial and spectral feature design and development of spectral signature of crop using hyperspectral data analysis also analysis of effect of air pollution on chlorophyll water and different uh, that is the uh, leaf content along with, along with that determination of leaf nitrogen concentration or spectral analysis of chlorophyll water content detection of pesticide using spectroscopy or estimation of phosphorus content or and that is determination of above ground ground biomass in grass using hyperspectral indices spectral dis discrimination with using non imaging hyperspectral data so whatever data is generated by this equipment whose spectral signatures are it they are referred as non imaging data or hyperspectral data okay along with that in vegetation these are the some of the topics where the students have completed their work or doing work that is spatial and spectral feature extraction for soil type classification from the hyperspectral remote sensing data that is creation of soil spectral library we are simultaneously creating as a spectral library for vegetation or soil or for the different thing in our lab so that that data or that spectral can be uh, made available to, for further research uh, those who are interested again identification of the arsenic content in the soil or monitoring hydrocarbon contamination of agricultural soil along with the estimation of soil organic carbon estimation of copper content in soil or spectral intimation that is estimation of soil moisture content or hyperspectral analysis of soil total nitrogen monitoring lead and nickel contamination in the soil or determination of soil texture that is clay sand and slit along with that 
um, some of the students have worked on the biometric characteristics. Uh, that is the palm pimp signature. That is optimal feature band selection for enhanced hyperspectral palm pimp recognition. Some of the students are working on fruit contents sort of contamination. <clears throat> some of the students are working on the medicinal plants. That is identification of plant species using this non-imaging hyperspectral data and much more. So in between that, uh, so many students, research students from our department are working on various crops, fruits, soil samples, medi medicinal plants, vegetable plants, and palm print recognition. Here is a list available. And simultaneously, we are creating a spectral library. And we are uh, that library is made available uh, to uh, the researchers, those who are interested. OK. So this is all, again, some of the topics on which MTech students are being working here, they are listed, OK? So uh, depending upon a particular work, that is, for every student has, uh, that is uh, created or that designed the map, that is app for estimation of a particular vegetation or soil content. Here you can see the sample of that is spectral estimation of soil moisture content using IESR model. Okay, here the basic things are being mentioned in the app. That is introduction about soil and uh, its uh, properties and all these things and the study area. So here uh, this model further uh, that is the samples from where the sample sample has been taken that is that is area sample location also provided in that one and uh, that spectral signature here you can see that uh, here you are getting that is soil type is a low and soil moisture content is a 14 gram per 100 grams hmm? that is the uh, soil moisture content find out in a particular soil sample and where the particular crop is advisable or suitable. That is suggested crop, that is sugar cane. Here you can see the suggested plant on a particular, uh, where the soil moisture content is in, in the ranging in, uh, that is 14 grams in a 100 gram sample. Okay. So similarly, the different apps are being uh, um, suggested in same app, if you are, uh, that is uh, getting that is soil moisture content uh, as a five grams per hundred gram, then suggested crops are maize and wheat. These are the, uh, that is on the basis of soil content, that is soil uh, organic. One moment. That is soil moisture content, the particular crop is being recommended. Okay. So here in second um, app, you can see that hyperspectral analysis of soil uh, nitrogen using PLSR model. Here also you can see the, all the details. So in the result, you can see that if you are getting the nitrogen range of point uh, that is 20.3, you can take the sugar cane or uh, pomegranate and soybean, jar sort of uh, crops. Along with that, if the nitrogen is 7.0, then crops recommended are, that is mustard, that is mori, wheat, onion, soybean, or cotton crops are suitable for this particular uh, soil because it is recommended. So in third one, that is estimation of soil organic carbon content using visual, that is visual near reflection spectroscopy. So in the, the different app, the particular uh, soil content is mapped on, on the basis of that, the particular crop is being recommended in a uh, particular sort of soil. So for greenery, here the spectrometric determination of above ground, ground biomass in grass using uh, that is PLSR model. Here above that is biomass of a particular grass 
is being mapped or being is also in the sample uh, ten normalized difference water index is point zero six zero biomass in this one is one zero seven point seven okay so this is the biomass uh, calculated for a particular sample okay so again estimation of copper content in agriculture soil okay so here you can see the sample selection out of the app and then by processing after processing here you can get this in this copper sample um, number 11 1 percent per 250 grams of soil uh, that is what that is copper content 1 percent per 250 gram of soil again the phosphorus contamination or prediction of phosphorus contamination is being mapped in another app. So, what we are doing that is all the combination done by we have integrated all uh, these models in one model, and uh, now that is we are able to give a soil report or vegetation report to any customer or vendor or farmer. As like uh, how the soil card is being generated, we are in position to provide a soil report to the farmer. So this is a contribution in between last uh, five to seven years uh, since this project has been started. So uh, covering all these things, I would like to conclude with saying that that this hyperspectral remote sensing. Uh, studies have a variety of applications, including geological or geology, mining, defense, environmental, agriculture, and material analysis or quality assessment. Selection of optimal wavelength to study different applications in conscious with a view based on broad range of literature reported. Acquisition and understanding of the basic spectral Signatures is very essential in every application domain. That's why. So with this, I would like to invite the faculty and students, those who are the participants in this uh, uh, two days uh, webinar, uh, to they are always invited, welcome. Uh, those who are interested to, be, to take the advantage or facility available in our university and department for their further study or research. And along with that, as you know, that Aurangabad is having a world heritage sites, sites as like Ajanta Caves, Elora Caves, uh, which are the that is UNESCO world heritage sites, along with Bibi Kamakpara, Devgiri Fort, and nearby, that is Patan, replica of Mysuru, garden. Uh, so along with the study, you can explore these things also. And we are ready to support those who are interested to work on or take the advantage and work in this domain. Uh, we are ready to support. So thank you with this. And uh, as uh, we are on time, I can take a couple of questions if anybody is having uh, out of the audience. So uh, that organizer can take question from the streaming people and uh, uh, we can take a couple of questions. So thanks again. I would like to thank organizers uh, for having uh, this opportunity to interact with this other gathering. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Uh, there is uh, two, three questions from participant side. So one question is mm -hmm. um, whether any app can be utilized for the diagnosis after capturing the data for Android phones or uh, PI provide or any. Um, can you repeat? Uh, whether any app can be utilized for the diagnosis after capturing the data for Android phones. Yeah, yeah, that's why the, 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 that app is defined, designed for a particular, that is for uh, it targeted to uh, map the particular content there that is the limitation of that particular app but what we have done we have integrated all these apps at one platform in our lab on the basis oh, okay. of that we can we are ready 
or we can provide a uh, the all soil content that is soil contents of contamination or all the vegetation contents. Uh, this uh, individual app will be uh, that is identifying or mapping only one sort of content. Are you getting? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, but uh, for getting a detailed report or complete report of the particular soil or vegetation, uh, we, we have to approach to our lab. Okay, okay. Sir, so, uh, there is one more question. From where we get free images for agriculture? Free images? Yes, sir. Mm, yeah, so well, that is those who have, um, for your kind information that I would like to mention that, uh, up till uh, the equipment was procured at our department, uh, we were the uh, first state university. Merely you can find this equipment in IITs or NITs. Okay. So wherever uh, those who are authenticate or uh, having a spectral data or spectral signature library, from there you can take this one. So we, we are having... Uh, uh, the respectable library made available freely. Only you have to make a request. Uh, we can provide if we are having a particular spectral library, so we can provide make, make it available to concerned person or those who are having their standard spectral libraries. Uh, you have to find out. Okay. Okay. Okay, sir. Sir, uh, the next one is uh, what are the free software available for image analysis? Yeah, the Q QGIS is a software sort of software free. And uh, we are having paid software also. That is RGIS, Redas, NV. Uh, but this QGIS or the other software are, that is uh, recently, uh, they are available, which are free software, which handle this uh, imaging uh, or non-imaging data or satellite data. Okay. Okay, okay. Uh, so the, the next one is, uh, do you know any startup working on satellite farming related research work? Any so startup? Working on satellite farming related research work. Satellite farming. No, uh, I have to check. Uh, I have not think about it. Or, uh, I have not uh, one, uh, that is come across. Okay, okay, sir. So, uh, sir, uh, there is the end of the questions. Uh, sir, you no, have right. No, I am having. Yes, ma'am. Uh. Here is a, again, if anybody requires additional information, here is my mail ID. Okay. Uh, they, are, uh, they can contact me on this mail ID also. Uh, so that whatever best possible support I can provide. Uh, I will okay. Uh, okay. Ready to help them. So I think uh, yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, uh, do you have any question, ma'am? Uh, yes, actually, uh, okay. uh, sir. Um, I'm Rujhadave, and I'm working in the same Nahebkas project. And I'm uh, my background is physics, actually. And uh, and sir. Um, uh, we are having various uh, collaborative projects with ISRO Ahmedabad, and I was also part of Everest NG, Everest NG campaign that NASA ISRO collaborative hyperspectral mission, airborne mission. Uh, so we are having a lot of data set with ASD also. We have ASD uh, spectral radiometer and yeah. uh, the field instruments also. And we are actually currently we are um, uh, taking a lot of uh, plant uh, a spectral signature mm -hmm. um, at various phenological stages. Uh, even yeah. we are collecting uh, this uh, deceased crop and healthy crop. So we are trying to ident identify the exact bands uh, for disease identification. Mm -hmm. So, sir, is there any uh, way to uh, you can say um, uh, make it in a uh, make it on a, some platform, put it on some platform uh, where uh, we can put uh, like. Um, uh, the data which we already have and we can give farmers some advisory related to hyperspectral uh, sensing because my domain is physics i can understand this uh, science very well but when it comes to computer or some android application part at that time we have to have help from uh, the experts so yeah. in, uh, in that case i would like to know if there is any uh, um, like platform available or we can make it uh, some kind of uh, such kind of platform 
which can be useful if we can identify the spectral bands and on that particular uh, um, identification we can uh, give advice madam is not able yeah yeah madam currently we are uh, recently we have completed work on the uh, for the cotton um, seeds or cotton tree early yeah, detection yeah. of the disease uh, that uh, with micro we are working and they have maintained the plot of the cotton that is a, a healthy um, plot of a cotton that is uh, then some that is spread cotton they have maintained different 10 to 20 plots and we have taken yeah. all the signature and we are working on that okay uh, in the yet results has to be finalized but that will that work will be useful for farmers for the early detection of the crop so accordingly uh, the pesticides can be recommended to farmers that is uh, there is a sowing after how many days what sort of uh, that pesticide in how much percentage can yes, be yes yes so as to protect the particular crop from the this one any uh, disease sir so yeah in that case sir yeah Hello. in that case sir i would be happy to collaborate with you because we have large number of data set of hyperspectral because we already have field in the campus and under yeah. one project we are collecting the plant samples and uh, taking it uh, or taking the all uh, like plant data for the model you would be knowing pro cell model Mm -hmm. so prospect and sale model for that we are uh, collecting 13 uh, plant sample uh, 13 uh, parameters of plant sample chlorophyll and so mm hmm again your voice is uh... Uh, so, uh, ma'am uh, ma'am ma'am your voice is not coming hello ma'am uh, e madam uh, voice has gone ma'am ma'am you are not <laughs> ma'am can you hear me no hello Yeah. Yes, sir. No problem, sir. Ah, uh, see uh, that uh, if you know the details of contact with Madam. Madam, yeah, yes. Ask her yes, to sir. contact me on my mail ID. It it is there. It was there. No. Uh, you are yes. having my mail ID. Um, Patel, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. I will say, I will send your email ID and contact details to Madam. Ah, she will yeah. communicate, sir. So he is can, also, she is also doing very good work in remote sensing and GIS. Yes. Where, where she is working? Here. Here. I get. I could not get. Uh, sorry. Where? Ha. Huh, Patel sir. Patel, yes sir. sir. He is. She is in Anand Agricultural University sir also. Oh, good, good, nice. So yes sir. Uh, can we have uh, accordingly? Uh, sure, so sure. I, yeah. And yes. uh, will we touch whatever the fruit to work? We come with the jointly. We can do. We are ready. Sure, sir. Okay. Sure. Yes, sir. We'll be in touch. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Ah, uh, thank you so much, sir. You have rightly explained again, each uh, and uh, yes. Miss Miss Kala, Shraddha, Shraddha. Yes, sir. Again, yes, I would sir. like to take a feedback. You take the feedback from party. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sure. Yes, sir. Sure, sir. I would be like to know yes, the feedback. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank yes, you. Sir. Thank you. Right. So thank you. Ha. Huh? So thank you so much. Uh, you have rightly explained each and everything uh, in detail. So and the information will be surely very useful to all of us in future. Uh, so thank you so much for this uh, technical session. Uh, now uh, moving on, uh, I would like to invite our next speaker, Dr. Sandeep V. Gayakwar, who is working as an assist assistant pro professor, computer science and application at. uh cherutri uh cherutri uh, university and uh, science and technology he also worked as assistant professor at government institute of forensic science aurangabad he has more than 5 years of experience in teaching his area of uh, specialization includes remote sensing gis internet of things web gis spatial analysis drought analysis software web uh, uh, soft uh, software web and um, 
yes uh, he received uh, six na uh, six uh, national awards also a member of six uh, national and international bodies he has uh, 38 different publications in in various journals and uh, and 75 citations in different articles uh, so i welcome uh, dr sandeep gayagwad sir for a uh, technical session too over to you sir thank you good afternoon am i audible yes sir you are you are audible good afternoon sir Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Welcome, sir. Good afternoon, uh, sir. And uh, good afternoon, Deshmukh, sir, also. He is my guru uh, from the Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar University. And yeah. it's a high privilege. Yeah. Yes, sir. Sure. Uh, shall I? Yeah. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Shall I start, sir? Yeah. I hope my screen is visible to you. Yes, sir. Okay. Very good afternoon to each and everyone. Uh, today, uh, I'm presenting a, a webinar on a drought monitoring and analysis using the remote sensing. And uh, we can say the, you know, the instead of remote sensing, let's call it as a geospatial technology. And it is the combination of remote sensing, GIS, GPS, okay. Now the first of all, we will see what is the you know the outline of the presentation, what is drought, and uh, its type, <clears throat> and uh, at the last, I will show you the case study of the Vajapur Tehsil, uh, which is the most uh, uh, you know the affected by this is the most affected. Uh, this is the, this region is the most affected by the drought since a decade, and let us see what is drought, and uh, let me tell you there is no a uh, fixed definition. Uh, for a drought. The definition of drought changes as per the landscape, as per the country, because there are various uh, climatic properties, uh, geographical properties, which is responsible uh, for the uh, drought hazards. See, a drought is a prolonged dry period, period that occurs in every climatic division of the world. Okay. If, uh, for example, if we are facing a drought somewhere, the some uh, uh, climatic division, they are also facing a drought. So it is not a fixed tenure of the drought. And it happens due to the lack of precipitation, uh, low rainfall, uh, less water available for the irrigations. And uh, it is having very severe, severe impact also. And that's why it is very complex phenomena to understand. And still, uh, there are so many scientific communities which are working in this, in this area. And they are figuring out the what are the main cause uh, to the drought disaster and what are the uh, effective methodologies uh, to analyze the drought conditions. And so government of India has published a drought manual in uh, revised that drought manual in 2016. The, it is the second version of the drought, uh, drought manual of 2014. But difference is that uh, government has added a uh, few parameters uh, that parameter we will see in the next slide but before that uh, there are major three ty types of the drought the first one that is the meteorological drought which occurs due to the rainfall deficiency and it creates so many problem right and uh, it is also responsible uh, it leads to the reduction of the soil moisture uh, and th that affects uh, drastically the agriculture sector and the production of the crops, uh, you know, get steepest decline in the region. And uh, with, with, uh, it is also affect the uh, uh, production as well as the leaps of the leaf of the crops get wilting and uh, health of the crops get degraded due to the deficiency of soil moisture and uh, rise in the temperature also. Similarly, the rainfall deficiency also responsible for the hydrological uh, conditions, hydrological drought. And uh, you can see the uh, reduction in a flow of water in a, in a river, in a stream, in the, in the lake and reservoir also. So basically there are uh, three major types of the drought and which is having a direct impact uh, on the uh, various environmental resources also. So for example, let's take example of water. So level of the water get decreases 
the ground water level is also decreases and uh, the water get polluted turbidity increases quality of the water get changes so these are the major indicators of the drought episodes similarly the soil is the most important natural resources and uh, it is also highly affected by the drought so you can see the salinity is increases the moisture uh, get reduced biomass reductions and the vegetation <clears throat> let us see the health of the vegetation is uh, the stress conditions occur in the region due to the drought chlorophylls uh, get decreases leaf wilting biomass get reduced and the agriculture production get uh, also reduced weather you can see uh, the various weather patterns uh, nowadays the rise in the temperature less humidity wind speed get increases and uh, these are also responsible for the fire hazards in the forest so these are the you know we can say the the drought having very severe impact on these four resources you can also see you can also uh, you know this picture uh, tells lot of lot of stories lot of words right the farming sector get affected by the uh, drought okay, you can see the the loss of livestock dry pasture uh, uh, you know the the fire in the various region happens due to the drought also because you know there is increase in temperature and uh, the water is not there <clears throat> similarly the uh, starvation of the cattle uh, happens due to the unavailability of the fodder in the region and uh, you may also find the low quality of high stake and uh, that's why grass that's why they mm, uh, the cattle is not able to give the quality milk and uh, the quantity is also reduced similarly the water is also drastically uh, the level of the water get down and down so these are the very severe impacts uh, on the farming sectors and uh, if you see the indian history of drought during the 1871 to 2002 the there were total 22 major drought happens right and you can say these are the drought years 1873 to 90 uh, even 2002 2013 14 2013 was a the good uh, we can say the Uh, 2014 was good, but 2013 we faced very lot of uh, drought episodes uh, in the Bajapur region. So I have included the case study uh, into into the presentation. And similarly, the in all over world the major crisis happens to be due to the drought also. And uh, near about uh, 30 to killed across the India. And uh, all this information. is a stated in a government has published a drought manual in 2016 so you can refer this manual if you want to do a research in a drought analysis and monitoring uh, research domain you must refer, uh, refer this manual this manual contain uh, some previous history as well as the recent advancement in the drought monitoring also in 2017 uh, the drought episode was uh, also uh in the aurangabad region and uh, still it is the drought prone area you know the marathwada region is the drought prone area let us move to the next slide and uh, there were so many news uh you can you can check the total suicidal rate uh, on a on this website that is the national crime records bureau of india this ncrb includes all the detail and you have also seen in a news also the number of suicides uh, happens uh, are happening due to the loss of income in the agriculture sector and here you can see that this figure is very uh, disturbing the you know the, there are 18000 near about approximately 18000 people uh, are doing the suicide in in each year and uh, the, uh, it is you can see this news on a uh, it is published by the times of india The eighteen percent rise, okay, and uh, you can see the Telangana, Odisha, Maharashtra, and uh, this uh, Chhattisgarh, Gujarat, some part of the Gujarat. Uh, uh, this region landscape is a uh, drought prone. 
and here you can see that uh, the only 4% of uh, 8,000 drought affected villages get relief uh, under the new norms. And that norms are uh, listed in the drought monitor, uh, drought manual 2016. And uh, because, you know, earlier a manual was, uh, you know, that was focused only on the, the rainfall data. But uh, the recent uh, advancement, uh, for example, the crop field was the one of the parameter, uh, even crop health. There are uh, four or five parameters were added by the government. And uh, some are the news, the, the, where the 2,000, 3,000 uh, villages are facing a drought in the region. And this is the overall rainfall distribution in, uh, in India. The, you know, we get the pre-monsoon rain, uh, you know, March to May. 10% only, but the uh, south west monsoon from June to September, that is a 73.4 total percentage. And uh, this is the, these are the indicators given in the drought manual. If the rainfall is uh, less than 750 mm, then that is known as a uh, low rainfall. And the, again, this parameter get changes as per the region. This parameter is only specific for the, uh, the arid region, you know, Maharashtra region. And uh, there are total uh, uh, 10 to 11 uh, district of the Marathwada region that are very uh, prone to the drought disasters. Even uh, I'm from the Aurangabad. This area is uh, facing a drought since, uh, since a decade. And all these information uh, are available on a government website also. So let us discuss uh, discuss the some case studies, some findings. First, I would like to start. Uh, I have completed this uh, research in uh, 2016 uh, during my MPhil tenure, and uh, what we have done, uh, we have taken the you know two years data, 2013 and 14. Here you can see that. The, in 2013, this red color indicate the, uh, you know, the drought area, okay? You can see the percentage of a green uh, region uh, in, the, in the entire uh, landscape of the Vajapur. Again, in, two, in August, the almost rain, because, you know, the we received very low rainfall in uh, July as well as August. So the most of the agriculture sector was damaged uh, due to the, the water stress. That's why this area, this green area, turned into the red area. Okay, again, you can see that. So 2013, uh, the year was very uh, bad for the region, the loss of income. Even you can see the land use, land cover map of the, the Vajapur uh, Tehsil. So in 2014, it, you can see the green region, right? You, even you can see the water bodies also. This is a Vajapur Dam. But in 2014, uh, 13, the water was almost vanished from the resources. And that uh, land turned into the barren land and most of the... So you can see this uh, figure also. You can see the rise in the... Uh, this, it it indicates the severe drought condition and this green indicates the healthy condition. You can see the differences, right? Similarly, again, uh, the, the problem statement was uh, to, uh, to use the new uh, indicators to analyze the drought condition in the region. Okay? And uh, so we figured it out the problem statement and we have decided at that time, uh, this is the case study of my PhD research. And uh, the objective was to identify and classify the drought severity using geospatial data, like a satellite imagery, ground truth, as well as ancillary data, meteorological data, and use the NDVI, IoT, uh, Python. We have done so, so many things. And uh, we also done the literature survey. And uh, we studied that the IMD has added the new parameters, such as the rainfall is there, zone area, soil moisture, vegetation health, okay? Earlier in 2014 manual, only rainfall was the major uh, parameter for, for the 
drought uh, mitigation as well as uh, drought identification right so the we have a new parameter and uh, we have the ogc that is the open geospatial consortium uh, there is some standards that helpful to design a web based a gis system for the data processing as well as a visualization right so this is the study area uh, the study area is uh, it located into the aurangabad uh, district of the maharashtra state and this is the study area and uh, major crops are uh, onion sugarcane jowar bajra corn cotton this is the a uh, cotton belt you know the some part of the gujarat to maharashtra karnataka this is the cotton belt and uh, we uh, we have four five water projects like, like the narangi sarangi dam and uh, bor daigao dam is also there but uh, all are depend upon the rainfall so it is just a dam for us right again uh, what are, whatever data sets we have used in the research uh, that is listed here ancillary data set uh, we have downloaded some government uh, has published some reports we have drought manual as well as some statistics as well as rainfall data from the maha rain uh, this website provide the rainfall data from 2002 to 17 and even if you can also get the data from uh, 1901 to 2002 on a request basis md pune uh, uh, the data is uh, much costly so maha rain is good for the uh, maharashtra data set topo set is available Uh, on survey of india you can procure from the survey of india office pune and uh, specifically we have design and develop the system for the ground truth data collection because it it required the periodically in the research and uh, for the satellite we have used a sentinel uh, two satellite data set as well as uh, for some case study we have also used a hyperspectral data set uh, imaging non imaging and uh, these are the link you can you can download data set from the given link and uh, the most important part of the research uh, of a remote sensing is that you should have the ground truth and you can see the data was collected every fortnight okay you can see the date as well as the region so we have selected total uh, 50 plots in the region and uh, we done the ground truth data collection Uh, on every uh, fortnight right and we make sure the data collection should take place at the time of satellite overpass so we made a team also and uh, it is not possible on a one day to take all the samples so uh, we can take uh, you know one day before you know in two three days we used to complete the crop survey in the region so you can you can see this entire data collection was take place by using our platform and the we have to observe the crop phenology soil moisture crop area health and uh, the collection was completed in 2017 to 18 so this is the basic information of the sentinel 2 uh, sentinel 2 satellite is the multi spectral satellite which is having total 13 bands and the data set is available uh, on esa and space agency you can download data set and you can see the uh, it it provides a data in a three different resolution the in a 10 meter we'll get a rgb plus nir in a 20 meter we get the red edge band and in 60 meter we get uh, the aerosol and water vapor bands and these are the dates of a data set uh, we started actually the june july and august three month data is is not available due to the dense cloud okay in 2007 so we have downloaded data uh, from october here you can see the date in 2017 and uh, but in the you can see the data was available in a september due to the less cloud cover so again you need you, you should 
you know the, you should also check the uh, cloud conditions uh, in the imagery also because that is this that is essential so total approximately 37 images of the of the sentinel 2 ab satellite was downloaded again uh, here you can see some experiments that uh, we have done uh, during the PhD tenure, the first one was the land use, land cover uh, analysis, right? So uh, here you can see, so what we have, we have a time series data set of a Sentinel and this is the methodology, right? Let me explain the methodology to you. So we have a three input data set. The one is the meteorological data set, right? And the Sentinel-2 satellite data set and ancillary data set. That is nothing but uh, the ground truth data collection. Okay. So we have a total 30 to 40 years uh, data set of, uh, which include the rainfall. And that data set is uh, useful for the uh, rainfall analysis or to compute the SPI, right? compute the SPI. Again, the satellite uh, data was in the format of level 1C, okay? That was the geometrically correct, okay? And then they performed the pre-processing pre of the Sentinel data set, uh, which converts the uh, top of atmosphere data into bottom of atmosphere data, that is the BOA, and which is known as a level 2 data set. And uh, sent to core, the plugin is available in a snap software so snap software is open source again it is available uh, in esa that is the european space agency uh, if net is connected rather than the theory session i would like to include a little bit practical also right sentinel Data DGS. Yes. So here you can download the data set, and that data set is having a 10 meter special resolution, right? And they have very low temporal resolution. That's why it is beneficial for you. Okay. And uh, here you can select the criteria. Right, uh, Sentinel One is the microwave uh, macro microwave satellite. Uh, that is the SAR data, and uh, Sentinel Two you can select. You can also select the product type if you want to download One C. That is the data set which is just a geometrically correct. This is atmospheric and level two A data set. Right. Again, you can also specify the cloud cover. So, for example, let me search the analyst. Okay, this is how you can download. I don't know my account is active or deactive, but let's check. Okay, it's up. Okay, all right, you can you can draw some okay. diagram also and uh, let's clear the field, okay? And again, you can search. So this is how you can download the data set, right? I hope it is working, right? And here you can click on download and download the initiated. Okay, that's it. Let me close this. Let's back to the methodology, right? Then we can create ROI, that is the training pixel uh, for the supervised classification method. You can use a maximum likelihood, you can also use random forest. So as per your uh, findings, you can choose the classification method. And finally, you, you will get the classified map, okay? And you can also perform the accuracy assessment 
by using the testing data. Okay, you have a ground truth. You can also verify the result. And finally, that goes to the uh, input that is input to our system. That is, they have also designed uh, a platform for the drought monitoring and assessment. Okay, let's. Uh, you can use this SPI index. That is the uh, standard precipitation index, and it is recommended by the uh, World Meteorological Organization. That is the WMO, and. Uh, you can compute this uh, SPI by using the DreamC software. Okay, uh, I hope it is also available. But DreamC, I will share the uh, link. Of the software, okay, if you require. So you can compute the drought indices and uh, it, it gives you the range of the SPI range from uh, plus two to minus two. And these are the drought classes. For example, if the value is uh, less than two, minus two, they, they, it means it is the extreme dot, right? And uh, these are, if the value is uh, greater than, uh, greater than zero or 1.0, that is the normal drought, okay? If it is uh, greater than 2.0, then it is extremely wet condition, right? Extremely wet condition in the region. So these are the uh, criteria of a SPI. And again, NDVI, that is the, it is very popular, uh, popular vegetation indices for the drought monitoring as well as agriculture crop analysis also. And it gives you the value between minus one to plus one, okay? And this is uh, this is the again criteria for the NDVI. If it is a thick vegetation, uh, you know, 0.5 to one, you will you will see the sugarcane is having very good uh, NDVI value because it is it is green. And throughout the 10 month, you will get very good and constant. Little bit change in that, but you will get. Uh, approximately a constant value of a NDVI, okay? And uh, other crops, the value get uh, vary as per the phenological cycle. So again, you can see that, that uh, you know, the in a visible, uh, this is the formula, okay? Near infrared minus red band and uh, NIR plus red band. So uh, the vegetation, healthy vegetation, uh, absorb the visible wavelength and uh, that emit the more radiation in the infrared region, okay? So this is how we can compute the NDVI. We need to use this formula and uh, you can also see the its criteria for the uh, drought conditions, right? Or the health condition. For example, if the chlorophyll is not present, so value would be minus one to near about zero or 0 0.1 and two. If the value is between the 0 to 0 0.3, then the plant, plant uh, present in the region. So by using this NDVI criteria, you can classify the uh, crops uh, phenological cycle also, right? And its condition also. Similarly, uh, these are the findings and uh, we have computed the SPI index, that is the standardized precipitation index uh, of a rainfall, okay? And uh, you can see the, in 2017, you can see the overall uh, rainfall in the region, right? So June having very low rainfall, then again, again, rainfall, July, you know, the June, it is started again very low rainfall in July. Again, we got very good rainfall in August. And again, you can see that there is no rainfall after the August month, right? 2018 also. And this, again, you can see the similar pattern in a SPI also, right? If low, low rainfall is there, then the crop NDVI will also show the similar patterns. Okay, similar patterns, you can see the patterns of NDVI as well as SPI. There is very close core, close relationship between NDVI 
and ESPI. This is a rainfall base, and this is the crop health base. Okay, you can see the you know the conditions in uh, July and June and July. It is very good condition due to the good rainfall. See the patterns, right? See the patterns. Then the low rainfall. Okay. Then also the crop condition is getting worse here. Okay. You can also uh, see the land cover of the region. In 2017, the water was present in the dam. You can see the smaller uh, water bodies, right? And this is the actually, this is the canal, right? You, you can see the line. This is the canal and canal don't have a water at that time. You can see the, the amount of water present in the dam, right? This is Vajapur city. Okay, this is where the city. And you can see the loss of green cover in the region. Here you can see that. And this fellow land that is the indicated by gray color, it is increases in the region, right? And you can see the water body settlement area, barren land is also there, right? You can also see the NDVI of 2017 and 2018. Here you can see the, you know, the, the green region, right? It is very healthy crops are present in the in the region. But here you can see it is not that, right? And uh, you can see the very good uh, crop this region because the uh, approximately one or two kilometer Godavari River is there. So that's why this region get the advantage of the Godavari River. So this area is very less drought, drought prone in the city. And this is the, this is the overall classification of a land use land cover. You can see the fallow land is increased by 54% in 2018. And uh, it was just a 13% in 2007, okay? And uh, this, it shows the vegetation, right? And it is also decline the vegetation up to 30%. So this is the overall uh, error matrix and the total ground truth was collected in 2017 was 1080, right? Similar. And you can see the, the accuracy was 90%. Again, case study, how much time? Let me check. I can tell Again, the next uh, case study that is the analysis and uh, this is the uh, uh, overall methodology was followed in the experiment so we have a sentinel data set okay and uh, we also perform the pre-processing by using sent to core plugin and we have computed the ndvi right ndvi masking take place and uh, we generate the uh, we can generate the temporal profile of the NDVI, okay? So, which is very helpful to identify the zone dates, right? Zone dates. Again, we perform the unsupervised ISO data classification and time series analysis of the cluster and uh, that gives the zone area estimation, okay? And the uh, ground truth point was used for the accuracy assessment and we prepared the map of the region, right? Let us, this is the ISO data. Yes, I'm registered. So uh, you can perform this uh, scatter plot analysis in an NV. So at the lower, let check. Okay, yes. So at the lower side, you can see the, you know, the, the, uh, the non vegetation area, right? Uh, that, uh, that is nothing but you know the uh, 0 0.002 0 0.23 okay this is the non vegetation area the green that is the stress vegetation you can see this is stress vegetation and uh, normal vegetation that is shown by the red color okay and dense vegetation that is having very higher value of ndvi for example the uh, 6 7 or 8 Okay, 0 0.67 or 0 0.8. Here you can see that, right? 
let simplify this yes so this figure uh, okay this is the actual photograph of the area here you can see that right and we have a three images right the november december month and january month here you can see the changes okay i have highlighted a plot okay this is one plot and this is another plot okay and in november the uh, the this uh, red color shows the vegetation the you know the faint red that means uh, the vegetation health is lower so in a november the cotton condition was like this this was the cotton you know the, this is the end of the life cycle of the cotton in november so the cotton was existed in december almost the the land was harvested right and uh, but there is no sowing of a uh, next crop right rabi crop you can see the changes but uh, similarly there was another uh, plot you can see the water water is present in the pond right it is present in the pond this is the canal okay the canal is uh, shown by the sand color and you can see again in a december the cropping take place right the planting of the wheat take place and you can also see the blue line in the canal right it means water is a uh, flowing in the canal right and it is close to the uh, this pond also so water is available for the planting of a uh, rabi crop here you can see that right again you can also see in a january the uh, condition of the wheat right but here no due to the unavailability of water okay so water is present in the crop so such type of observation uh, observations are helpful for the drought analysis in the region and you can also see the uh, temporal profile of the ndvi okay i have been point the location here you can see the the sowing take place in a uh, no you know you can see them in a november okay right and the last week of the september and the you can see the phenological state of the uh, wheat is that is increases right and this is the maturity state then the loss of uh, when it reaches to the maturity state and it start uh, you know the the turn into the yellow condition right the chlorophyll get vanish so you can see the it is going down so this is the profile of a wheat crop again you can see that uh, this another region okay the existing crop was there again the uh, the crop land is prepared for the next sowing crop that is the wheat crop again the the wheat received uh, the good water and then it start the profile start increases again it is down due to the uh, stress condition again it is to the right is to the maturity state and then moves to the harvesting stage so this type of profile is uh, useful uh, to analyze the uh, crop conditions in the region right so you can extract the sown date here you can see the uh, the sowing date of you know the november 1 to 15 you can also focus on this region right so we can get the sowing date also right here also this region september last week you know we can say that and up to november 15 right so what we have done here uh, we have performed the sown area classification based upon the early sowing normal sowing and late sowing okay for example uh, the, the farmers have taken the corn crop crop or other crop which is having very less phenological cycle you know we can say the four month right then they can perform the early sowing right here you can see the the profile get increases and it reach to the uh, maturity state and goes to the harvesting stage right the normal sowing generally take place in uh, october you can see the patterns right the maturity state in a january and then uh, that moves to the harvesting stage late sowing generally happens in a january in in my region 
and uh, uh, it, I hope it, it is uh, similar in uh, across India. And then it can harvesting uh, can harvesting can be take place in uh, April to March to April month, right? So I have performed. We have performed the NDVI classification, right? Uh, to extract the zone date also as well as zone area classification also. So you can see the the percentage, right? And uh, that is available in hectare. And uh, here you can see we go back to total Karib crop, existing Karib uh, crop, fallow land, zone area, right? Late zone, normal zone by yellow, and early zone by green, right? Here uh, this figure will justify uh, these numbers here. You can see the water is water was present, right? This is the non vegetation area that's why it is increased uh, that is uh, illustrated by the red color okay that uh, comes under the unclassified feature right <clears throat> early zone it is indicated by green right normal zone by yellow and late zone by the uh, this blue color okay you can see some lines also these are the uh, roads, national highway, right? And this is this is canal. So this is the beauty of Sentinel 10 meter resolution. You can extract more information, right? Again, error matrix. Uh, the overall accuracy was 88.39. Again, the development. You know, the in case of development, we have designed and developed a ground truth collection application as well as a web-based system, right? <clears throat> so application the, that utilizes a GPS service, okay, and that set, uh, data sent to the uh, via internet to the application server. And uh, uh, finally, the application server is uh, is used to process the data and uh, send back send to the uh, databases you know database and uh, we can also visualize this data okay in a web gis right so this is the the methodology we followed for the data collection as well as uh, the entire pre-processing of the ground truth data Uh, the screenshots are present. Uh, probably, maybe huh, it is there. Okay. Yes. I will explain this uh, entire application. Okay. Let's complete the next uh, experiment. That is the uh, development of IoT kit for the soil moisture analysis. So uh, we have. Uh, you know, the nowadays the uh, various open source softwares are present. Uh, you can use that software to visualize the uh, uh, IoT data. Okay. And we have used uh, Liplet. Okay. Liplet library uh, that is useful for the map visualization and uh, open source hardware that is the Arduino Node MCU and some sensors. And uh, we have used Android for the app development, uh, MySQL, PHP, Cloud Server for the its data visualization purpose. The entire uh, the experiment was the sensor web enablement. So we also developed the uh, APIs in PHP that fetch the data from uh, sensors and uh, send to the send to the server. You can see the, the architecture of the IoT kit. Uh, it, it is having the DST11 uh, sensor, which record the temperature as well as humidity. Again, soil temperature probe is there, BS20. Soil moisture sensor that is the, the that is used. There are total four sensors uh, connected to the kit, and uh, power source is there. Wi-Fi is there. And that kit, that kit uh, sent data 
to the server and uh, you can also visualize this data into the application also right so why we have uh, why we have connected four soil moisture sensor because uh, we have also designed this uh, soil probe which is used to insert into the soil like this okay and uh, soil get filled up to up to 2 3 feet okay here okay then what we have to do we will get the you know the layer wise uh, soil moisture status okay and what we have to do we have to dismantle the probe and uh, we can insert the soil moisture sensor to each and the, the total four probes are there to the probe and uh, we'll get the information uh, on the mobile phone also the status of the soil moisture as well as the temperature and humidity dst11 is connected here okay this entire kit uh, was developed uh, it is not that much costly it uh, cost me around uh, less than 5000 okay and uh, you can use uh, you can adjust the height of the probe according to the root height of the crop okay so here you can see that you can use up to 3 feet okay you, uh, this is purely detachable uh, mechanism if uh, the crops uh, is uh, very uh, in a nascent stage so you can adjust only one crop only one thing okay and you will get uh, the crop moisture up to 40 centimeter 30 to 40 centimeters so this is very helpful for the research uh, again we have developed the application okay you can see the screenshot and uh, you can you can add any custom project uh, you know the in the previous section one uh, ma'am has asked a question so uh, some of the drawback uh, of you know the uh, of existing application uh, uh, you know that we have figured it out and try to cover in this application so you just need to mention the ground truth name and some information just hit next and get the gps uh, gps data which is lat long accuracy and altitude again when you click on next the data again uh, move via intent and uh, you will get the uh, sensor value here okay that page the data from iod right and you can take the photograph of the sample you can select the category okay the soil type soil color and click next and that data uh, get you know upload uh, to the server okay that is given server again the data uh, is also available for a visualization purpose on a web based platform that is iot dash and you can see all the uh, you know the collected records uh, in in the pop up manner you know in a pop up window okay and you can also download this data set uh, into various format like a csv kml pdf right as per your your requirement you can download the you need to select the project okay you can create as many as project there is no limitation again uh, this is the the small experiment was was performed for the sensor calibration and uh, the 10 days uh, reading uh, 10 days reading of a soil moisture sensor temperature sensor humidity sensor and uh, uh, and the total four sensor right soil moisture soil temperature humidity and temperature sensor right uh, the soil temperature sensor uh, this information these readings were uh, compared with the uh, existing sensor and uh, you can see the analysis right here uh, we have also we have also uh, placed our kit into the crop field okay for the 30 days measurement here you can see the uh, the changes okay after 10 days when the uh, farmers irrigate the region okay uh, when availability of the water resources you can see the 
there is a hike in the soil moisture right again soil moisture get reduced okay into uh, 7 to 8 up to 10 days and then when he uh, irrigate the region by using water resources then you can see the uh, sudden hike in the in the soil moisture okay and you can also see the uh, level right the black shows the soil moisture one two three the four soil moisture values right sensor values and uh, this yellow color indicate the soil temperature right again humidity and this is the air ambient temperature and we have also developed this uh, iot based platform that visualize that is used to visualize the sensor values okay that is a sensor web enablement and you can see the records okay that is the live records so this kit is very useful for the crop analysis soil root zone moisture mapping you can also develop the water balance model by using this kit also and uh, it, it is a budget friendly kit right the last experiment was the development of entire drought assessment system right so uh, before that this is the architecture right we have a web interface we have an internet okay internet connectivity uh, that is used to import and export the data from the database okay via application server and we have a third party services like a google map is there open street map is there that map is used to uh, act as a base layer for the data visualization right and this geo database which include the lat long uh, values of the ground truth right and some images again we have also developed a, a python based tool for the ndvi uh, computation right and it is what you have to do you have to uh, add all the satellite data into one folder it automatically extract it automatically locate the uh, all the data set and compute the ndvi so that is the batch operation right it perform the batch, batch operation and it is very useful for the uh, time series data processing okay in terms of only ndvi right and you can also create the stack of a data set and which is further useful for the uh, drought analysis so this is the entire system uh, this is the my <clears throat> Uh, phd mentor vice chancellor professor kv palesar uh, and the system includes the various module right the geo mapper specifically for uh, ground truth data collection iot module that covers the uh, the iot based and the map that is the visualization here you can see the drought menu also that is used to compute the meteorological drought as well as hydrological and agriculture drop okay and some tools are present so this is the we can say the output or this is the major main system right here you can see the toolbar is available okay and uh, this is the google map you can see the google map you can use a google map also you can use open street map also and even if, even if you can turn the this uh, street map into the satellite imagery also okay all these are the services the uh, google map uh, provides you the trial version so no doubt you can use open street map is uh, free for you you can use this uh, map base layer for your development and uh, this uh, this we have developed this toolbar uh, which is having the basic function like uh, <clears throat> zoom in zoom out okay save download uh, this is the output of the ndvi you know in our earlier side earlier slide i sh shown to you the ndvi right so you can visualize the ndvi layer on the overlay analysis okay for the overlay analysis and this is the base layer uh, of a google map okay and again you can you can see these labels right this label so i can you can also figure it out the first order region is having the this type of broad condition right this is the wise opportunity 
sea water is present okay it is also classified by the uh, ndvi also right you can you can see the superimpose right again here you can see the uh, some scale north arrow direction accuracy as well as lat long right the zoom controls are there you can also uh, increase and decrease the transparency of the uh, this this image right and the, the, we have also designed the plugins for that and some markers are there right when you click on the markers the markers get added into the system right this is the overall description of the menu and uh, this system includes right here you can see that uh, our ground truth data collection system right so this is the application and data is collected by the app right and uh, it is sent to the server and you can you can see the this information into pop up window and this is the web gis right and you can you can choose here you can choose the map layer type right from google to satellite imagery so google it will also helpful for you to locate the exact location okay uh, exact gps location of the uh, where you have collected the data right and it is near to the this dam shu yogi dam is present in a kohli region right and uh, we have also developed the web mapper tool also if you uh, it is not possible if you uh, the well aware of the region you can just you need to just perform the right click on the interface and you can add the features right you can add the feature and save the records so this this is also useful for the uh, the further analysis and you can use the uh, this data set in the snap software also in nv eridas also for uh, classification purpose right there are various modules of the system with the apis right ground to system iot meteorological dot agriculture dot various modules are there and that data set is available in a kml format you can uh, download the data into kml and visualize uh, in the google earth also okay and in a csv that data can be useful for the uh, you know the for the further analysis right you can use this data set uh, to visualize the pinpoints in a snap as well as a nv and eridas right for the various type of analysis means a soil crop crop yield crop conditions and uh, these farmers if we give this application to the farmers farmer can register themselves and they can also send the data okay and uh, being a admin you have a control of a data set so uh, the recently we are working the new version of this app and i hope this will be available for all the researchers of the remote sensing community again you can also add some entry right you know the crop production in a kharif season as well as in a rabi season here and data can be beautifully visualized in, uh, by using the graph library right yes. and you can also import and export the data uh, and that can be used for for the uh, you know the for your purpose as per your requirement there are various various features we have added into the applications right various features so total near about 64 and still we are adding the features and uh, okay this is the end of the case study right so case study right right the entire area was affected by the drought condition so what we have done we have investigated the drought episodes by using the spi and ndvi indices right uh, spi and ndvi relationship so you can you can figure it out the similar patterns right similar patterns in ndvi as well as spi profiles and this data set require the historical data set uh, you know the, to compute the ndvi and spi it requires the time series historical data set and which is available uh, you know uh, you know the, you can download from the esa or earth explorer also 
and uh, for a rainfall it is available on maharain as well as data dot right and if the the spi value is less than uh, zero it means there is a drought condition okay the region is having a drought conditions so you can see the uh, normal drought condition or we can say the uh, this is also drought condition but it is not that much severe uh, which was uh, which was present in the 2018 right so 18 we had very extreme drought condition as well as in 2013 same drought condition so this is a repetitive episodes of the drought and you can also uh, figure it out uh, we have received less than 50% rainfall uh, in the region and uh, you can see the you know the less than 50% area undergone in a kharif sowing as well as uh, more than 50% people uh, could not sow due to unavailability of uh, soil moisture right or unavailability of uh, the water for the irrigation purpose so uh, the sowing was take place in two kharif season only and this region the entire region of the aurangabad is uh, it is uh, comes under the scanty rainfall region and the agriculture sector is purely depend upon the uh, rainfall okay so there is a much scope of the research in the region right and uh, so uh, the primary thing is that the you should have the very good ground truth data that will be helpful uh, for you uh, in terms of accuracy assessment in terms of uh, training and testing uh majors right and uh, we have also developed the ground truth data collection using this smartphone and uh, web gis application right that is that is known as a geo mapper uh, we called it as a geo mapper right and uh, similarly the uh, integration of iot see the, the remote sensing it is just a single term okay but geo special technology that means a remote sensing right gis gps and you can also include the uh, iot and a smartphone technology so by combining all these things together you can design a very powerful system for the uh, crop analysis also for drought analysis also and drought disaster also any kind of uh, remote sensing application because you know the uh, gps uh, the cost of gps very high if you want to purchase the trimble the gps which cost uh, approximately uh, 18000 to 20000 but your smartphone gives the very good accuracy nowadays so you can use uh, a smartphone application okay uh, to get the very good accuracy to map the uh, crop as well as uh, the your point of interest the center sensor data was collected by using the uh, the, the you know by using the application as well as some apis have developed and uh, we have created uh, the created the se separate applications right for soil it is known as a soil mapper crop mapper and now what we are doing we are integrating the application into a single platform the the work is still going on and everything is uh, based upon open source so there will not be any licensing conflict in the future so you can also and the code i will try to available this code uh, for you guys also you can also uh, modify the application let, let us see and uh, the system was very much helpful for the uh, government agency as well as non government agencies also and uh, that uh, that is helpful for the development of a policy as well as a mitigation planning as well as a drought assessment uh, in the affected region so significance uh, of the research study is that that uh, can be used for uh, you know that can be uh, useful for the crop insurance also and uh, you can also minimize the uh, the physical cc experiment uh it can be useful for the drought survey also and uh, if you attach iot kit uh in the experiment you can monitor the soil moisture condition in a real time right and uh, 
that kit uh, that data okay what we can do so for example the your iot data remote sensing data smartphone data can be integrated and by using the various technique we can also provide the advisory to the farmers also okay <clears throat> This is a contribution. We have designed an application, IoT kit, software also by using a Python, right? This is the entire system. This is about my internship. And the entire <coughs> experiment, uh, you know, the was performed under the, the financial assistance scheme of the UGC BSR. And the project was going on in the department. And under this project, we also uh, procured the hyperspectral ASD device. And uh, we have also filed the four patents for the entire system. Uh, we have produced the three SCI paper, which is having very good impact factor, uh, greater than 3.5U, right? And uh, we have a 19 Scopus publications. Uh, this is the patent information. They have filed total four patents, some publications, references. This is all the information, right? <clears throat> and thank you so much. If you have any question, I will be happy to help you or answer the questions. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir for uh, educating us on this uh, very, uh, this topic. Uh, so uh, sir, uh, there is no question from the participant side. Uh, so I would like to uh, call uh, Shraddha, I, I, yes, yes, ma yes ma'am. Uh, hello, Dr. Sandeep. I'm very much actually, I can very much relate myself with the work you have done because we are working in the same field, uh, soil moisture right. applications and uh, um, uh, remote sensing applications in agriculture. So uh, the very first question I would rather say, I'm very much curious to know about the sensor which you told, you know, that because uh, uh, the sensors, soil moisture sensors, which we are using right now, that works on um, reflectometry, dielectric reflectometry uh, principle. And uh, obviously, when we uh, purchase from the company, it will cost around uh, um, two, three lakh rupees. So, yes. and obviously, accuracy would be I don't know about your accuracy. So, I, I'm very much curious to know about the accuracy of the instrument because you have told that it will cost around 5,000 rupees. So, how uh, you are validating the accuracy of the sensor? Actually, you know, the, when we have used this uh, LM based sensor, mm -hmm. uh, the which having the erosion problem. Okay, yes. the accuracy get uh, decreases after the 15 days or after the month and we need to mm. replace the sensor. Okay, yes. That was the, you know, when I was a student, I also focus on money. So this was the very cheapest sensor. But if you replace this sensor with the capacitive sensor, that also gives you very good accuracy in which you solve the problem of corrosion. And uh, the, you are talking about the sensor, which is great for the research. Yeah. Okay? And that is the standard. Uh, sensor for the soil related, related research, right? Yeah, because the sensors which we are using, Stevens Hydro Hydro Go sensors. Yes. Uh, obviously, because we are working in with uh, SEC Israel uh, Ahmedabad in yes, uh, yes, some yes. soil moisture projects. So we need to have some standardized uh, instrument uh, to uh, collect the data. But I would be very much happy if we can also like uh, go through some validation uh, thing of such kind of sensors so mm -hmm. that can be mounted at various locations which will reduce the cost, uh, obviously, and uh, if it can uh, give you the proper data. So in that case, have you validated uh, with the gravimetric method or something, uh, which is the uh, like established method, uh, in situ method? Uh, yes, we actually the, you know, the, uh, by considering the scope, we just collected a data. Okay, uh -huh. the, one of my friend is working on a, the tomorrow is having lecture. Is specifically working on a soil. So we okay. are a team. We are a team. We were working on various applications. Okay. So if I am developing some application, I used to uh, give them and they perform mm -hmm. the their experiment. Okay. So I have the my major focus was the development of a ground proof collection system, okay. which is which is I'm having. No, but in that case, uh, the, the uh, like the accuracy, is very low. accuracy of the instrument accuracy. is very important. 
yes so, yes i know yeah so in that case we need to validate with the established ground uh, methods which is gravimetric in case of soil correct, motion correct, estimation correct correct that sensor is having the uh, erosion problem after okay. the erosion you know the it take place due to the you know the, the oxide properties yes. and uh, the accuracy is lower yeah, we, we need, need to change, change. Really. Okay. Ha, that is the and it cost uh, 100 rupees okay okay so uh, if you use a capacitive sensor which cost you around uh, 300 plus or more than 300 so which which is very again useful sensor Okay. That so that cannot cost. be permanently mounted on yes, the yes. yes. You just have to insert and take the data. Like yes, that. of course. Yeah. Another question is um, uh, the system you have developed for drought monitoring. Uh, is there any specific reason of using only optical data set and not microwave data set? Because that is very much sensitive to soil moisture. So yeah. is there any specific reason uh, that I would like to know? We actually uh, focus on a visible uh, yes. reason only, huh. but uh, in terms of microwave, micro is the best solution for the agriculture crop uh, analysis. Soil and moisture also. Soil moisture analysis. Yeah. Yeah. So the NISAR uh, project will be, it is initiated and uh, the satellite will be. Yeah, I am part project. of NISAR project also and for soil moisture also I am part of that. Okay. I already had worked on uh, NISAR data. And okay, okay. even uh, we right now also we have one soil moisture project or under Mahataram umbrella. So we are collecting soil moisture data at every 12 days interval with Sentinel 1 pass dates. Yes, uh, yes. And that is why also even SMAP products are available SMAP. for soil moisture, direct soil moisture. Yeah, SMAP is. SMAP, yeah, SMAP is. Right, right. So are you planning SMAP. to develop something using microwave data? Yes, I am learning microwave actually uh, in 2000. Uh, 18, I have attended the, you know, the SAC and uh, the NASA, NASA people, NASA, NASA people, people yeah, program, yeah, agriculture. Yeah. Yes, I yes. was there. Yeah. Yes. So it uh, increased my interest into uh, the SAR remote sensing and uh, the, you know, I'm, I'm attending, I'm going to attend the, so, the such the kind of system programs. can be developed yes. for like micro data set also. Of course, of course, it yes. can be developed, but it required more expertise of the physics people also. Yeah, we, are, we are doing that thing uh, since long. We are doing that thing uh, like since RISET uh, uh, launching, we are working on soil moisture. Uh, yes, so yes. For RISET data also, we have worked on. Even RISET is also now launched and it will start giving data in June, this June also. So, okay. we, yeah, can we would be happy. Yeah, yeah, we would be happy to do something which so. we give some IoT based uh, application. And sure, one, sure. Yeah, one more question I was having, but maybe we can talk later on personally. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Sir, uh, there is uh, one uh, question. Um, how you develop this application and dashboard, uh, dashboard? Can you give more information about both? Or okay, any books or link uh, references is there? Okay. See, the online resources are available. Uh, for map visualization, you can use a leaflet library. Open layer library is also there, but uh, uh, I don't like the open layer because it is having certain limitation. So go for uh, leaflet library and the documentation is available. And uh, for a dashboard development, you can use a bootstrap version 3 or 4, any version you can choose. So and, sir, uh, uh, is there any application available in Playstore? No, application is not. Uh, we have developed our own application. Okay. 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 It is our own application. This is our own development, uh, you know, develop platform. So it will be available very soon. We are modifying it and we are so, adding sir, the IoT parts. Yeah. So, sir, uh, can you uh, give the uh, Android application name you mentioned, sir? See, uh, for a ODK Collect, it is the open source plan application that is available. ODK okay. Collect. Okay. okay. Yeah. And uh, my application name is a Geo Mapper, Geo Mapper, and it is it is not available in a in a, in a Play Store, but uh, in a next yeah. coming days it will be available on a Play Store. So okay. anybody can download the application and can use for their research purpose only. Okay, okay, That's it. okay. Uh, uh, sir, uh, can you also uh, uh, you can share those materials? Uh, what? Uh, you uh, thoroughly go through so uh, yes yes maybe uh, yeah okay let me you can visit to my website the most of okay. the uh, tools are uh, present 
and uh, the platform okay, so, uh, you can right? share okay okay that url is there right yeah yes we uh, you can yes please. you can visit the okay various tools are there right you can also okay. see the demo of the web demo of the entire platform here okay okay uh, sir one more question is that uh, can we use sar data for crop monitoring which one data uh, sar data sar data sar data it is the SAR, SAR data in key. SAR, 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 yeah, SAR, SAR data. data is, uh, SAR data is highly useful for the soil moisture analysis. And it gives you uh, the recordings, you know, the under the dense cloud cover. So it is highly useful. And Sentinel-1 okay. data set, uh, that is the micro satellite data set. Okay, okay, sir. So uh, there is the end of sir uh, questions uh, from the participant side, uh, and sir uh, end of this uh, technical session too uh, also. So sir, uh, thank you so much for educating us uh, for, uh, for about the topic itself. Uh, it is very uh, useful and informative for uh, all of us. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, so yeah, and uh, our uh, next uh, session will be uh, uh, tomorrow at uh, ten. AM. So I request our uh, participants to be online at the uh, uh, proper time. Okay. Thank you so much. Sir. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Organizing committee for giving me an opportunity.